All right, so starting out, we need to establish a common language around units and scientific notation. Um, because whenever we talk about a number, any numeric quantity in science, uh, you also need to know what the unit is. If I just tell you uh, it has four, then you don't know if it has four kilograms, if it has four meters as its diameter, if it has four seconds as the time of an event, etc. So the SI units are the common units that we use. This is the international system of units established in France in the 18, 1800s, maybe before. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on history more generally. Um, but the ones you might be familiar with are the meter, which is the SI unit for length, the second, which is the SI unit for time, and uh, maybe you're familiar with the temperature unit of Kelvin, maybe not. I uh, will explore that in the next week. Uh, and lastly, you are probably familiar with the kilogram as a unit of mass. And by familiar, I mean, maybe you've heard of these things before, right? But you might not really have a like physical intuition for what it means. So let me try to provide you with one for the kilogram at least. So a meter, you can all go and find a meter stick. It's three something feet. So that's reasonably uh, comfortable, but a kilogram is less obvious what it means. So I have a, a kitchen scale at home since I'm a sourdough baker. And here, if I put four apples on my scale, that's about a kilogram. So that is the you know, kind of physical intuition we can build around for what is one kilogram. A small amount of mass, but reasonably, uh, you know, bulky. Uh, okay, but why do we use scientific notation? Well, when we use SI units to describe the sizes of things on an astronomical scale, uh, they are often very, very large numbers. So even uh, this, you know, planet of Earth, which is a large object, but not by any means some of the largest things we're going to study in this class. Uh, if we try to write its mass in kilograms, it's just extremely long, right? And so this number is only tenable if we transform it into something that's easier to deal with. So how do we do that? Well, we basically just count up all of the factors of 10 that we can and round them up into a single number. So there's a decimal point at the very end of this number. And if I just count backwards, however many times it takes to get to a whole number between one and 10, then all of those factors of 10 can be recorded separately. All right, so when I write this number in scientific notation, this is what it looks like. The whole number 5.972 is between one and 10, and that is what I call the prefactor of this number in scientific notation. And if I count all the numbers, uh, all the factors of 10 here, I see, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, times three digits, right? They're grouped in three digits. Uh, eight times three is 24. So the mass of the earth in scientific notation, I would express as 5.972 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Um, okay, so the prefactor is the 5.972, the exponent is 24, and the new format that this number is in is handy dandy because uh, it, the mathematical operations with numbers in scientific notation are a snap. So I will show you an example. And if you want more examples, Appendix C in your textbook is a good place to start. And there's also lots of you know, free resources such as Khan Academy. If you want, I can give you another worksheet with more practice, but I'm guessing that you don't want that. Okay, so why is math so easy in scientific notation? Uh, because there are only two rules. The rules for multiplication are like this. When you multiply numbers in scientific notation, you multiply the prefactors and you add the exponents. So for example, if I have the number three times 10 to the five multiplied by two times 10 to the nine, I get six times 10 to the four because the three and the two, my prefactors multiply to give me the six and the five and the nine add to give me the 14. All right. And there's a error in the next part of this slide. Sorry, I forgot to fix it. For division, the rules are similar, but slightly different. You divide the prefactors and you subtract the exponents. So that should not say multiply, it should say divide. Sorry about that. And as an example, if I take nine times 10 to the six and I divide it by two times 10 to the three, I get four and a half times 10 to the three. Take a minute and think about it. Um, look at those numbers and tell me how you got there. This is a rhetorical question. Just think about it. 
Okay, so dividing the prefactors, we get nine divided by two is four and a half. And then subtracting the exponents, the exponent in the numerator uh, is positive and the exponent in the denominator is the one you subtract. So for that, you get 10 to the six divided by 10 to the three gives you 10 to the six minus three. Six minus three is three. So our answer overall is four and a half times 10 to the three. So uh, I just want to get practice with this idea. So uh, if I list table of the sizes of the earth and the sun, just looking at the diameters of the earth and the diameter of the sun, uh, the earth's diameter is 1.27 times 10 to the seven meters, more or less. The diameter of the sun, approximately 1.39 times 10 to the nine meters. And my question for you is, uh, is the sun two times larger than the earth, 10 times larger, 100 times larger or a thousand times larger. All right. So it now looks like most of you are voting for C that the sun is 100 times larger than the earth. And that's exactly right. So if we take the diameter of the sun 1.39 times 10 to the nine and divide it by the diameter of the earth, then we get uh, approximately one times 10 to the nine divided by approximately one times 10 to the seven, oops. And so we're going to just round those off to one. Those prefactors will cancel each other out. And we'll just be left with 10 to the 9 divided by 10 to the 7, which is 10 to the 9 minus 7, which is 10 to the 2. So that's 100 times.